Hello folks, Sunny Thoreau. So today I'm going to speak about um, citistry in two charts. So what is synastry? It's typically when you look at charts of two people that are romantically linked. And when the planets are interacting with each other, it's sort of a merger of a type of energy. It could be positive, it could be negative. And it also depends on what phase of life this, the, the people meet. Um, so typically we look at synastry to link um, charts in, in the romantic context. Um, but you can also see these connections with friends and family, of course. Yeah, so let's get started. Now, matching charts is, of course, a routine job for a typical astrologer. There are several rules um, prescribed, actually, for, for matching charts for a successful union, a successful, successful marriage. Um, but there's more to it than a simple point system, which is the, the, like the conventional uh, Jyotish marker for, for matching. Um, if the astrologer is good, and if, they're, if, if they take the time to, to um, go a bit in depth, um, they'll also give you an overview of the two charts seen together um, beyond the, the, the points. Right? Cause sometimes you can have really, really good points, but if you look at the chart and you match them, there's, there's a lot of sort of perhaps challenges and complications in understanding each other. And other times you get low points, but when you put the charts together, it's beautifully matched and it's harmonious and um, there's, a, there's a very good um, connection. So you have to go beyond just the point system. And if you do do that, you can see you could get sort of a snapshot of what their life would look like together and where the challenge will be and um, you'd, be in better, you'd be in a better position to advise. Now, of course, everyone brings their own karma into relationships and um, the more serious karma you have, when I say serious, I mean intense, severe, um, pressing, um, with, with, with someone, then usually it translates into just as intense of an attraction. Because right? um, we, you know, we, we, on the surface we talk about attraction and um, love and connection and longing and things like that, but the stronger it is, <clears throat> usually it's an indication of a lot of um, some, some serious karma to deal with um, and, um, and resolve. Uh, so it, there's there's um, a, a very natural connection between between the two attraction and karma. And the most obvious thing to look at, if you are looking for that is of course Rahu and Ketu. I always consider Rahu and Ketu to be very valuable indicators in a chart anyway, but particularly for synastry, they're very important. Even, the, even if the client has no specific questions regarding these, I think they should still be analyzed, right, where the Rahu Ketu connection is. Um, they tell, basically they tell where, where the subconscious is directed, pulled A by the desire to experience, which is the energy of Rahu, and B, pushed by the disinterest to experience, which is the energy of Ketu. But regardless of what the connection is in the chart, whether it's Rahu or Ketu, the, connect, the, the attraction will be intense depending on where they're placed. Karmic relationships are those which are carried on from previous lives and um, they're more focused on completing unfinished karma unfinished desire. So today I'm actually going to focus more on Rahu in Sinistry and I'm going to speak about how Rahu placement in one chart impacts the planets um, of the other person in the other chart. And relationships which are linked by Rahu are quite powerful 
and they tend to be forward orientated and focused on growth potential, but then also they trigger more fears and phobias in us too, right? Because that's Rahu. Rahu indicates karma linked to the present and the future that you look forward to. A Rahu linked relationship offers a chance to both people for growing and learning together in this lifetime. It also offers an opportunity to accomplish work together, which perhaps um, neither could complete alone in this life. So let's take an example, for example. Um, so we, uh, if your Rahu is in, um, in your third house, in your own chart, if your Rahu is in the third house, and your friend's Venus is in his third house, then third house matters will usually be the focus of your relationship together, right? Matters of third house may be lucky for both as long as the relationship lasts. You can check out the signs too. So if your Rahu is in Aries and his Mercury is in Aries, then both will benefit from Aries related matters. But this effect will be less intense as compared to the houses. Right, so focus on the house slightly more than what the sign is. And of course the planet is first and for foremost importance. Um, so generally the matters of the other planet will be in the will be in focus in the relationship. So whatever whatever the nodes are touching, whatever planet the nodes are touching will be the focus of the relationship. Usually, but not always, the one whose Rahu is involved benefits from the planet of the other. Okay, because remember, Rahu is shadow. It's cal it's a it's a nodal calculation. It's whereas the planet it's a it's a physical planet with all of its qualities, and therefore is going to shape that Rahu person. Yes influence that Rahu person. The other, uh, the other planet provides direction and guidance as well to the Rahu person. But of course Rahu provides the energy, the desire, the impetus to connect and the thirst for experience to the other planet. Okay, so let's start with Rahu and Sun. Rahu and Sun, um, of course, you know, of course coming together, it is an eclipse, but it's a very, very deep connect and can last a lifetime. And in fact, if you're looking for um, a long-term relationship, um, marriage, romantic, whatever it is, um, usually the nodes will connect to the luminaries. So Rahu Sun, Rahu Moon, Ketu Sun, Ketu Moon. That's usually a pretty ind good indicator that that's a lifetime sort of relationship. Now, with the Rahu Sun, back to that. Um, as I said, it's a deep connect and it can last a lifetime. It, Rahu amplifies basically the sun's powers, which can be good for both. The Rahu person basically gives the power, the strength, the desire, the luck, and optimism for the future. And the sun person gives the inspiration, the self-confidence, creativity, healthy sense of self-ego and leadership. The sun person will drive the relationship. Like for example, they would perhaps decide the common goals that the two will pursue together. But both will have to ensure that this does not create ego problems because that's kind of a with a Rahu sign that can happen. Um, there may also be an undercurrent of that, like that, that father or mentor type of feeling between the two of them. So that can be quite common, which is, which is not a bad thing. Now, Rahu Moon. Rahu Moon is a very strong emotional connection between two people, which can certainly last a lifetime. The Rahu person basically amplifies the moon's qualities. The relationship becomes, therefore, very nurturing and feelings dominant. 
I'd say also look at whether the moon is waxing and waning. If it's waxing, it's, it's even more intensified. The Rahu person provides support of the outgoing type, physical protection, and then receives emotional nurturing from the moon person. But I think both should take care that the relationship doesn't turn into sort of a needy type of love because that can very easily happen with a Rahu and moon connection where the, where the emotions are heightened and the attachment is, is also very deep um, and at times a little bit clingy. Um, but, you know, I, I, that's, that's, that's not such a bad thing um, because it can create a, a, a nice bond between two people. The moon is basically the sum of your existence and Rahu is an astral force. So this relationship can, uh, for that reason alone, be very intense and um, both will remember it. Both may even remember past life incidents from their common lives if they are in tune. So it's a good one. All right, so next we have Rahu Mars. Now this is of course a very intense connection as well and it can go either way because we're talking about Mars here. So initially the two will attract each other with their outgoing natures, high energy activity, and they might even enjoy arguing with each other. But with time, the disagreements and conflicts may also increase and this does not bode well for long-term success. So this relationship will be exciting, it will be dynamic, but it will also be challenging. There is abundant energy here, um, cooperative spirit, a lot of desire, of course, both Rahu and Mars. Um, so there's a sense of together against the world. If, you know, if both people are mature and it's well-placed, so. There's kind of a, like a brotherhood type of connection um, a friendly connection, which is, which is great. Um, the Mars person um, needs to be careful though, because, um, their self-ego, their, their way they exert themselves can hurt the Rahu's, Rahu person's ego in the relationship. And it can manifest into sort of a one-off type of relationship as well, where you connect, you, then you disconnect and then you reconnect. Um, so both people are often separated and then meet up for short, intense periods because they can only handle each other for short, intense periods perhaps. But So that, that it can result in that. But again, these are just one-off connections, right? You have to see everything else in the chart. All right, so next up we have Rahu and Mercury connecting. This combination is quite good for a long-term relationship. Um, Rahu tends to amplify the Mercury type of activities, communication, team spirit, um, playing together, being together, um, and both will support each other in their hobbies and interests and learning new skills and things like that. Um, talking on the phone a lot, maybe uh, messaging, being in touch, and both might share the same tastes and ha have common interests as well. So now this connect is the best possible one for an easy friendship. And even successful business partnerships. This is a very good connect. Mercury is very intricately connected to desire, being the natural ruler of the third. And you know, Gemini, of course, is the first of the Gamatrikon, so there's a link with desire there. So Rahu Mercury could give a very successful relationship. Um, on whichever level it manifests. Next we have Rahu and Jupiter. This is a good combination of two grahas basically um, who apparently seem to be very opposite in nature. Both share hopes, higher learning and wisdom. Rahu provides the drive and Jupiter the benevolence. These two can grow with each other. So it's a good long-term connection. Both have very different viewpoints, but in the background, they both think on similar lines. Basically, this is a combination of desire to experience, which is Rahu, and the ability to philosophize that experience, which is Jupiter. So together, they make a really good team and also make a great deal of sense. 
this connects both the, um, the, the material, philosophical and spiritual growth. And if these two people meet when they are older and more mature in their life, they would be better able to support each other with this connection. Yeah, because experience and wisdom, um, they both balance better with, with age. Yeah. So it's a good one. Rahu and Venus. This is a good connection and it tends to grow deeper with time. Um, there's a scope for romance and also respect for each other. The Venus person will give their wisdom, love and the relationship glue. Of course, it depends on the level that they're operating. And the Rahu person will protect, provide the luck, the fierceness and the common direction for their lives. This is one connection where Rahu actually feels responsible. Yeah. So depending on the house in which this is happening, this can lead to romance. It can very easily lead to physical relationship, um, marriage, and um, any kind of attraction. Yeah. And in fact, attraction is what this relationship, this connection will evolve from. That will be the starting point. And then of course, um, there's other things, you know, that Venus symbolizes. There's enormous potential with this connection with Rahu and Venus, um, of esoteric wisdom, of growth in the metaphysical, in the material, in the occult. Because after all, Venus is not just the planet of love. Right? He's, um, he's a guru. Shukracharya, with all the knowledge and the seriousness that goes with it. So, in fact, in mythology, he's a Daitya guru. And Rahu is a Daitya. So it's, it's a very natural connection. Um, essentially making Shukracharya Rahu's guru. There will always be sort of an undercurrent of teaching and learning in this relationship as well. So it's actually a, like a nice sort of package deal. You know, you, you, you have the attraction and the sensuous pleasures and then you also have the, um, the learnings that can come with it. So a very, very good connection. Uh, Rahu and uh, Saturn. <clears throat> now, this one I feel can get difficult because Saturn is rest restriction. It's discipline, it's constriction. I feel like, according to me, I feel like Saturn and Ketu are a better connection in Sinistry. I know that some astrologers may not agree, but Rahu Saturn is, is a tough, tough one. Rahu basically amplifies all the Saturn stuff, so it can create issues and the relationship might remain a short-lived one or it could carry, carry on and on and on in misery because Saturn doesn't like the, it doesn't let go, right? Like it's, it's kind of the glue. Um, but if the house in which this is happening is a suitable environment for Saturn and Rahu, then it might actually be very good for the, for both people. So it depends on what your, how, why have you come together? Um, but certainly it will not feel like a nice, comfortable connection, but it can work nicely in the third house, right? personal courage, sixth house, um, health, healing, service, suffering as well. Eighth house, death and catastrophic transformations. Um, eleventh house of gains can work well. So it is a pretty serious connection overall. But a lot of people don't um, find it to be a bit too draining. Um, Saturn her person can help the Rahu person in various material ways and um, they can like sort of systematically organize things for them in their profession and their work. The Rahu person may help the Saturn person by bringing him luck to, um, to find like legitimate shortcuts, innovative ways to reduce the workload, right? Because Saturn is basically Garga for career, for work, karma, action. Um, 
But despite all that, I don't know about the longevity of it. I mean, Rahu Saturn background is always very serious and it may feel a bit suffocating. It may feel a bit restrictive and love less after some time. So it depends on why you've come together. It's a good connection for non-personal relationships, like non-romantic ones, um, distant relationships, um, group activities of um, developing any kind of interests or um, profession, career, that sort of thing. Yeah. Rahu and Rahu. So both people here are, 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 are quite similar. I mean, you're born around the same time, obviously, um, in what they desire in this life. Both want the same sort of experiences. Um, Rahu in the same house or sign in each other's chart will ensure that both are attracted to similar things. Um, both have a very deep understanding of each other's motivations and inclinations. Um, it's a great combination for companionship, friendship. Um, the only um, place where it can lead to conflict is if both want the same thing at the same time, the same object, the same person, um, rather than the experience. So this can get ugly um, and with no limits on what each can do to, to each other. So, um, but of course, we, you know, we see this connection in people that are born at the same time. So it's quite common. Um, Rahu and Ketu. Rahu and Ketu, it means usually you're born nine years apart. Um, this is actually very good for companionship in the real sense. And it's usually a lifetime connect. And it also grows deeper with time. Um, it's a connect of two opposing energies, which are actually one, ultimately, right? Because Rahu Ketu is, is, this, is the same entity. So this gives sort of an innate understanding of each other, which not necessarily needs to be articulated or understood completely, it's just experienced. It's like an intuitive understanding. There's also um, genuine sympathy, affection for each other, and they, they both appreciate the other's life path. Um, the simplest reason is that the Ketu person knows at the deepest level where the Rahu person is going, right? And may go through it in the future. The Rahu's present future is Ketu's past experience and vice versa. Both are astral Graha, complete wed, wed with each other. Thus these two can feel that the other is a missing link, which completes them at the deepest level. So that's it for that. Um, it's just a general framework on how Rahu linked sinistry relationships can evolve. Um, of course, the finer details will depend on the house in which this combination is happening, um, when the people meet. Um, and of course, keep social and cultural background in mind. Like Rahu, um, Rahu does not mean necessarily that the two will break out of the social cultural norms and engage in deviant behavior, right? In fact, I would say always keep the socio cultural background in mind when you're looking at sinistry. These are mental and psychological patterns that we're analyzing here. So um, since it's Rahu involved, um, they're always going to be significant because Rahu is a desire for experience. So if you have someone in your life with such a Rahu sinistry, analyze the relationship in greater detail. It will help you understand your own self better. So that's all for now, folks. Hope you enjoyed that. Cheers.